of significant optic disc and or visual field changes. Surgery for glaucoma is generally indicated when optimum medical therapy or laser fails to sufficiently lower IOP or a patient does not have access to or cannot comply with medical therapy. However, before one actually proposes a trabeculectomy, one must consider for a given patient, how does one define IOP control? What are the chances of success of the surgery and operative risks? What are the risks of not operating for the case under consideration? What are the arguments of early surgery? These questions are examined with the specific goal of making a rational decision for the patient at hand. In the second consensus meeting on glaucoma surgery, Weinreb and Croston said that the decision for surgery should consider the risk-benefit ratio. Although a lower IOP is generally considered beneficial to the eye, the risk of vision loss without surgery must outweigh the risk of vision loss with surgery. How does one define IOP control, that is target IOP? When IOP is markedly elevated, a single determination may be sufficient. Otherwise, clinicians should generally measure IOP more than once and preferably at different times of day when establishing baseline IOP prior to surgery. Progression of glaucoma, either structural and functional, is clearly a threat to vision and strongly influences the threshold for surgery. Can be determined for a patient under periodic evaluation of structure and function. A greater rate or risk of progression may lower the threshold for surgery but must be balanced against the risk of benefit of surgery and life expectancy of the patient. So risk factors for progression of glaucoma are emerging from prospective studies. The AGIS study said that older age, lower education, males, and diabetes were risk factors. The CNGTS determined that female sex and migraine were risk factors. EMGT said higher IOP pseudo-exfoliation, worsening visual fields during follow-up, disc hemorrhages, and advanced stages of disease are greater risks. Presence of these risk factors may alter target IOP or lower the threshold to surgery. In fellow, if the fellow eye vision loss from glaucoma is present, this may lower the threshold, the, uh, the threshold IOP for surgery. A family history of blindness from glaucoma is not a known risk factor for vision loss, but for such patients, one may require very close observation. Now, what are the risks of not operating for the case under consideration? A greater rate of or risk rate or risk of progression may lower the threshold for surgery, but must be balanced against the benefits or risk of surgery and life expectancy of the patient. As so an elderly patient with slow progression may suffer no effect on quality of life during his or her lifetime. So the threshold for surgery would be much lower. Sorry, it would, be, uh, would definitely be less. And advances, adva an advancing glaucomatous optic disc damage or retinal nerve fiber loss without detected visual field loss is progression and can be an indication for surgery in some cases. So. What are the chances of success of surgery and the operative risks? So pre-op considerations such as inflammation, duration of medical management, presence of other ocular pathology, etc. The risk of post-operative complications in high-risk cases such as Serge Weber syndrome or, failed, or earlier failed surgeries, coexisting cataract and glaucoma, cataract and angle closure glaucoma, and secondary glaucoma. In such situations, some cases may be suitable for primary shunt procedure instead of trabeculectomy, and cycloablation may be considered in blind eyes. What are the arguments for, arguments for early surgery? Primary surgery may be indicated on the basis of socioeconomic or logistic constraints as well. Patients with poor access to medical care due to geographic or economic constraints, and of course, primary surgery is not necessary in all patients, but these may be thought of for, so these, for this set of patients, and patients who are unable or unwilling to use their medical therapy due to neuropsychiatric illness or physical disability, the extent and location of da damage may alter the threshold for surgery. That is, patients with advanced damage or damage threatening the central vision may require lower IOP than those with early disease. Thank you.